Hi, George here. And we're going to be talking about how to bring images into another image. Let's say I wanted to have this girl here standing in front of this castle or kind of a grand house. Now, normally I would just drag and drop this just like that. Pretty easy to do. But notice how she comes in at totally the wrong size. So she doesn't really fit properly. And this is a standard problem that you'll frequently come across if you're trying to combine different pictures together. So I'll show you the different ways that you can bring an image into another image here. But first, I want to remind everybody that this channel is 100% fan supported. The channel would not be here without your generous support of my YouTube channel. You can give me that support in a few different ways. The easiest way is just to click on that thanks button right down there below the bottom right hand corner of the video. Just send a little thanks. That really does help a lot. The main thing that funds my channel and keeps these Photoshop Elements videos up here on YouTube is from people purchasing my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It is, of course, the best way to learn how to use that program. I cover everything in there, not just the few things that I show here in the YouTube videos. And something else which does actually help quite a bit is to click that like button and also make sure that you are subscribed. That way you won't miss any videos in the future. Okay, let's take a look at this now and see what happens. And I'm just going to delete this layer up here on this picture. Just trash can that one. There we go. Look at our background picture here. I just clicked on that. Go up to image, come down to resize and image size. And here's the image size. It's 1920 by 1280. Standard size I'd use quite a bit. But the resolution is at 72 pixels per inch. So it's a pretty small or low resolution. Let's now take a look at this picture over here. I'll cancel that. Go to this picture. Same thing. Image and resize image size. And notice that this is the basically the same size up here. It's a vertical as opposed to horizontal, but basically the same size. But the resolution is a lot higher, as you can see right there, which means that the images don't match size-wise. Now, most of the projects that I do here on YouTube, I'll make sure that the images I'm using do match size-wise before I do the project. That's just the easiest way to do that. But if you have this problem here, there are a few ways you can bring one image in and then adjust that. The easy is just to drag and drop it like I showed here or you can drag and drop right down from here, down from the photo bin, just like that. Same thing. And then grab a control handle. You can see those corners up here. Now, if you're not seeing your control handles, you can use the control T keyboard shortcut to display those. You can then just drag it down and get the person to the size you want. Whatever that size happens to be for the particular image. Of course, I'd remove the white background also. That's pretty good, but we're doing a big resize here inside of this image and it may not look very good. Now notice that it's a little bit fuzzy here. This is just a temporary placement image. As soon as you hit that green check mark, it tightens up a little bit, but it's still not the best way to resize because we're just kind of doing it here on the fly. Now, little resizes are okay. I'll frequently do that. Or if it's not that important, I'll go ahead and do this. It's just the fastest way. Do you want better quality? There are two steps for better quality. Let's just get rid of this one up here. I'll just trash that. There we go. The first step is just to place the image in here using the file place command. And when you place an image, it does two things. First, it comes in as a smart layer. So if you resize, it goes back to the original image to find the resizing for that. And that helps a lot. It also tries a bit harder to make a good resize when you first place that in. So let's click over here on our main image. Let me just get this out of the way. There we go, main image. Go up to the file menu right here. Come down to place. There's your place command. Click on that, find your next image. There it is, choose place, and it comes in placed in here and it tries to resize it to fit your image. So it did a conversion here to 72 pixels per inch or dots per inch to get that resize. Now, when I come in here and adjust my size this way, notice it's kind of looking kind of weird or wonky. Hold the shift key down while you do this and then it resizes proportionally. And then we can place it where you want to and it's gonna be a higher quality at this point. So that's one step to get a better quality image is using that image place. Now, the nice thing about this is if I go off and I do something else, then I come back over here to this layer, control T to bring back up my control handles, do another resize. It's still gonna be working again from that original image. That's something which doesn't happen if I'm just resizing the image that I've dragged over here. If I resize that image, it's gonna be resizing from the last resize that I did. And each time you resize it or make an adjustment, you're gonna be losing a little bit of quality. With the smart object layer, which we have right here, by using the place command, you never lose that quality. Okay, just cancel that and then I'll delete this one. Now, a better way, and my favorite way, is to get the images to match size first and then bring the images together. Now, I want to have the higher resolution. So the girl is at 300 pixels per inch. So that's what I want. This one's at 72. So let's change this image. 
go up to image, come down here to resize image size, and then change your resolution right here to 300. Now you also could change your width and height or your pixel dimensions up here. Normally you change it right here, document size. If you wanted to change these settings in here, then change your resolution first and then do this second. It's gonna work out better for you if you do it that way. Now, I'm going for a larger picture here. I've increased my resolution, so I have some options now, and this allows me to fine tune exactly how this image resize is being done. It's not just gonna be using just a standard setting. So if I'm going larger, I'll be using the bicubic smoother. This is an enlargement, so that actually is a better way to go. I could use bicubic sharper. If I was doing reduction, making this smaller in size, that's a better way to go. If I have a lot of gradients in the image, I have the sky in here, but most of it is not gradient. I could use these smooth gradients, and the nearest neighbor is going to keep your hard edges. That's useful if you're doing graphics or text or things like that. That's the best one to choose. So we do have an ability here to come in and choose a better setting for this. Since I'm enlarging it, we'll go to best for enlargement, choose OK. It'll be enlarged here to fit that new setting. So to get this back to fit screen, hold the control key down and hit the zero key, and that's fit screen. And this is now at that 300 pixels per inch. Now when I bring the girl in, she'll be a much better size, much more appropriate size. So I'll do two things here because we adjusted the size here. I'll use a place command again so I get the best of both on this. File, come down to place, and there she is. Choose place, grab a corner, and let's just resize her. There we go. And I think somewhere around like this would be a pretty good size for that. So we're using a couple of these different techniques, I'm using the right choice for adjusting your image, you get the best quality when you're doing these kind of merges. But the main thing you want to do is to first get both images at the same resolution, the same DPI setting. And again, that's up here under image, come down to resize, image size, and that's right there. That's when you want, you want both of your images to be at the same resolution. And at that point, it becomes much easier to bring them together. And then if you use that file place command, it brings the image in as a smart object layer, which makes it much easier to work with. Now, the problem with the smart object layer is that I can't change the actual pixels on here. So if I wanted to paint on her, I couldn't do that without converting it to a regular layer. Easy to do, just right click on the name up here and then choose simplify layer right there. And you can then do anything you want with that layer. We'll do this as a smart object layer though for this project and let's bring her down just a little bit and I think in here someplace is a pretty good size, right here is pretty nice. I'm just looking at this thing here. She maybe should be a little bit larger. I don't know exactly, but I think that looks good for the picture, about two thirds of the height. And we'll now just finish this off by getting rid of that white background. So this is just a standard background removal on this picture. I'll zoom in a bit. There we go. And we'll grab the lasso tool here. I'll use the magnetic lasso to start off with. It's set for a new selection. It'll come up here to the top, just click to set your first point, and then you can let go of the mouse and pull the mouse around and just follow along with that contour. Now, if you need to put in another point, you can just tap it like that and put in a point wherever you want it. Hold the space bar down to move the image and just come along and follow that outline. Now, don't go too fast on this. If you need to move your mouse on your mouse pad, you can pick the mouse up, get it quite a ways away from the mouse pad, move it and then put it back down again. Then you can keep on moving. There we go. Like right here, I'll put a spot like that, click in there, and we'll continue on down. Here at the bottom, just go across the bottom like that. And this is come in here and across the bottom again. We'll fix a few of those spots as a second pass on this, but this takes care of most of the work for us using the magnetic lasso. Now this tool works very well on white backgrounds like this. It relies on having a good separation between your foreground and background and not a very busy background. As long as you have that, this is a great tool. If she was on a background, let's say in a field or a forest or wherever, then this tool might not do the job. But since we're on a white background, it's great for this. But let's now switch our tools. I'll go to the polygonal lasso tool and let's zoom in a bit more. There we go, back to our lasso tool. Hold the space bar down. I'm just gonna take a look along the edges here and see if we missed anything. Little spots like that will catch that with a refined edge. We'll do that as the third pass. But this looks really accurate. A little bit right in here that I missed. So I'm going to add that in. 
So let's set this to add and start up here on that dashed line and then just come in and come right around like that. That gets that piece and then in here. And then just double click and that finishes off that selection. Now we need to get this bottom part in. Same thing, just go onto the line right here. Put in your new selection. We can go clear outside and then around that part you want and then double click to finish it off. And that adds that bit in. Same thing on this leg. Let's come around like this, up to this side, and then up around that part that we're missing, and that's fine. A little bit right here. So as you can see, the magnetic lasso isn't perfect, but it does save you a lot of time on getting most of it done. And it's just a matter of a little bit of cleanup. Like right here, I can take that bit out, the switcher to the subtract, and we'll just come in here and get that little corner. That's one thing, the magnetic lasso is not that good at corners. But I got that one okay. Now up in here, I have some spots. This bit here, this bit here. That was included in our major selection. I want to remove that stuff. We'll be using the refined edge, so I don't have to be really exact about this. I'll just be close. And we'll just select around here and take this major section out. And we'll use the refined edge to clean up the edges of that selection. Now with this tool, come in here and you click and you move your mouse and then click again and move your mouse and so forth. Don't click too fast or it will collapse your selection. If you double click, it collapses the selection. So make sure you just click and then wait a beat and then do your next click. There we go. And then we'll come around this bit down in here and get this out. This may or may not take some cleanup. You really can't tell until you get this thing finished. But cleanup is easy to do. I'll normally do a cleanup on the finished layer mask if it's required, it may not be on this one. And again, just doing a real fast selection in here for that section. And I'll get this little bit right here. This just helps the refined edge to know where to work. Although it still may not do these parts. It's up to the refined edge. It may do them or it may not. It's kind of picky sometimes on those little areas. Okay. And the rest of the hair looks fine. All right, let's now switch over here to refined edge. You see that white outline, that's what we want to get rid of. And we're using this top tool here. This is the Refine Edge Radius tool. I'm working with the white background, so I don't want to have anything in here that could let that white background bleed in. And then just paint along that edge. And Refine Edge will go in and figure that out and give us a better edge on that. Now the way that Refine Edge works is that it's actually going to first find the edge, and then it gives a very small amount of feathering on that edge. There's more feathering up here, but it still gives you some feathering. It actually makes that edge just a little bit soft. So if you need a hard edge, you know, an actual hard edge, then don't use refined edge because refined edge does soften the edge down. Now that slight softening will make it blend into your background better, and that's what we want in this case. And if you're working here where you're going into some hair, work from a section, one of these red sections, and over here I'm working with the overlay. That's that red coloration and then push into the areas that you want to get in the hair. That seems to work out the best. Magnetic Lasso did a good job along these edges, but it's going to be giving us a hard edge. So I'm going to be going across this and use Refine Edge, clear around the whole outside edge. And that's just going to soften that edge down just a little bit, and that will help blend this into the original photo, or to our background photo. So we're almost there. Along the top up here, and there we go. And that's done. Okay, now, come over here where it says Output 2. I like going to a new layer with layer mask. It just gives me a protection layer that way. So, new layer with layer mask. Choose OK. There we go. And that edge looks really, really nice in there. I think that's a really good job. I use the Control-0 keyboard shortcut to go back to Fit Screen. And notice up here, it's a little hard to see, but there's a little icon right down here. This is the Smart Layer that we brought in or placed in here. And the new layer that Refine Edge made is not a smart layer, it's a regular layer. So I can then come in and do any painting or anything else that I want. Let's now do a little adjustment here on our position. I think over here is, looks a bit better. I think it all looks pretty good, except we will have to fix that hand. So let's zoom in over here and see what this needs. You can see it's a bit thin right here and we have those white spots up in there. And that can be fixed on the layer mask itself. We have the polygonal lasso tool. And I'm gonna set my feathering hat just one pixel just to help Soften this edge a little bit, and I want to make a careful selection right in here, right along this edge, and come just 
into the figure just a little bit. Here's our selection. We're on the layer mask side. Notice that light blue outline. And then white shows black hide. So I need to have black on this. Grab the paintbrush. And it's a pretty small size. Let me bring my size up here to maybe about 30. I'll just type that in. That's better. Then just paint over that. And that brings that bit in. Control D to deselect. And that's done. Up in here, it's a little bit thin as you can see in here. So for this, I'm going to change my color here to white and I'll just paint in on the layer mask with white. And I think I'm gonna bring my brush down. It's a soft edge brush right now. 30 is pretty large for this. Let me bring this down to 13 again. The smaller the brush size, the less softness you have on that with a soft edge brush. Now I can control that a bit going down here to brush settings. I have my hardness setting right here. There's your soft edge brush, that's your hard edge brush. I want something kind of in the middle. I tend to find that around 70 is good for this kind of an edge. So here's a 70 hardness. So you are able to control exactly how hard the edge of your brush is if you use that brush settings. And we'll come in here and do this. Notice how that soft edge now is a pretty good match to the actual soft edge that we have on there for a selection. So again, 70 tends to work out pretty well for this kind of a job. And we'll get that fixed and her fingernail right there. And right down here, we lost this whole fingernail here. We can fix that pretty easily. And I'm going to go over here to black this time. And then using the black brush, I'll just paint it along this edge. So I'm actually painting on the layer mask right now and hardening that section up. I'm doing this large edge, as you can see here with the brush and just thickening this bit of the layer mask, but I can come in and do a little bit more with increasing the contrast in this area. But I want to have the contrast increase just along the edges, not in this big middle section. Okay, I'm not going to spend this whole video showing this little touch up. I want to show the major parts of that. So I've come in and I've repainted in this section. Let's now go over here to this tool. This is the burn tool and it's set for midtones, which is fine, 30%. And then if I just come over these edges, this is going to increase the contrast of the layer mask along those edges and that will help to darken down that section and just work around and get that whole bit done. Okay, at this point, I'm just gonna pause the video for a few minutes and I will finish this job in here since this will take me several more minutes to get this nice and cleaned up. And as soon as that's done, I'll bring the video back up again and we'll look at the final result. All right, there we go. The hand and hair in here has been fixed. It looks really nice. Now she's a little bit less contrasty than her picture in the background. So we need to increase the contrast on her just a little bit to help fit into the overall picture. So for that, I'll do an adjustment layer. So layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. Where it says use previous layer, check that, choose okay. And in here, the left side is your dark. So I'll bring those up a little bit like that. Look and get the dark so that the darks feel correct for the overall image. Right here, I think that looks pretty good. I'm looking at her jeans actually and comparing the jeans to the area around the jeans. I think that's all right. Your middle control here is your midtones. I'll lighten the midtones up just a little bit. And of course, the right is your whites. And I'll bring that up just a touch. There we go. And I think that's a much better match. And there it is. That's how you can bring a picture into another picture. And the best way to import that picture using the place command and also make sure your images match the resolution. Now, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from this video, why don't you send me a thanks? That's that thanks button right down there, right down below the bottom right hand corner of the video. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is with my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Don't forget to click on that like button and also subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future. And I'll see you next time.